Welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. What does asbestos management mean to you? I used to really struggle with the asbestos management at my site, but now it's a breeze. It used to be really expensive. I was paying loads, but now I've got my asbestos power team in place. It's so much easier. Asbestos can be a pain in the ass if not handled right. We had to stop the job because asbestos was discovered. Now we don't have that problem. Asbestos management is easier than you think. Asbestos management. Be proactive, not reactive. Think about asbestos first, not last. And now your hosts, best-selling authors and asbestos experts, Ian Stone and Neil Munro. Hi, welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. My name's Neil Munro. I'm Ian Stone. So today, we're going to go through the seven steps to asbestos management. So we've put this leaflet together and we send out to duty holders or property managers, and which explains how they can quickly and simply manage asbestos. So we're going to go take you through all those steps today. So Ian's going to take you through the first one. So first and foremost, for you <coughs> to manage your asbestos, the most important thing is to identify the asbestos. This should be undertaken by having a, a survey completed, a sampling survey completed. Normally that's a management survey, because if you haven't got the information of where the asbestos is, then you're going to find it really difficult to actually manage it. So that's kind of the first major step that you need to take in asbestos management. Yeah, definitely. It's just knowing where your asbestos is, where it's located, is definitely the first step. Because how can you manage your asbestos if you don't know where it is, or yeah. what it is, and what sort of condition it's in? So it's a really important step. Okay, so step two is record findings. And what we mean by that is... Once you've identified where the asbestos is in your property, it's keeping that information up to date. So if you've got works that happen on your your premises and things change within the building, it's keeping that information relevant and up to date. And most importantly, it's keeping the, the register and the plans up to date. So if buildings change, walls come down, you need to update that. And if asbestos is removed, it's updating that as well. And then the most important thing is when you look at asbestos management, you have to presume it's present until you've got evidence it's not. So one of the main things is keeping a record of any areas which haven't been inspected within the building also. So that's really important on that step. Definitely. And just to add to that, that's kind of a big one where um, we find a lot of clients fall down on. They will identify the asbestos, they'll have a management survey done for their property, they have the report sitting on their computer or sitting on the shelf and they kind of feel at that point that they're covered and they're compliant and they don't really do much else. But, I mean, two things. One, that isn't being legally compliant. And two, like Neil said, when things change, as soon as something happens on site, that document is out of date. So that data really does need to be uh, be kept up to date. Third one, assess the risk. So this is where it can feel like managing asbestos is quite complicated. The risk assessments we're talking about for these are not the material risk assessments which you get within the asbestos survey report. These are additional risk assessments that should be undertaken by the property manager, the duty holder who's responsible for the asbestos. And what these risk assessments do, they're called priority risk assessments. What they do, they determine what asbestos you've got, where it's located and the likelihood of disturbance. And the reason for doing these is to determine your kind of overall risk assessment to produce an action plan on what needs to happen on site. And it also helps to determine what needs to be done first, essentially, because you can have low risk materials in high risk areas or high risk materials in low risk areas. And for instance, you could have pipe insulation that's in a really bad condition but it's in a a cupboard within or a storeroom off of the side of a boiler room nobody ever goes into that cupboard nobody needs access to that or anything like that so you've got a really high risk material but because nobody ever goes in there it can be come down the pecking order if you like it's considered lower risk or on the flip side of that you might have something like a, a cement panel within a school reception where you've got 2,000 kids walking past it every day. So a cement product is a fairly low risk material, but it's in a high risk area because you've got a lot of footfall and children going past it, kicking footballs against it and doing whatever every day. So for the priority risk assessments, like I say, that, that is something the duty holder should undertake themselves. But this is something that you can do with your surveyor. That's what we do for a lot of our clients. We work hand in hand. The the way we do that is we will speak to whoever we've got as a a contact for the site who knows that site the best. 
and run through any asbestos elements with them and run through how often are these areas accessed and kind of just go through the risk assessment together um, and produce the specific one for that site. Yeah, definitely. The the only thing I would add just for an explanation is there's two types of assessment when we look at asbestos. The material risk assessment, as Ian briefly mentioned, that's provided within your asbestos server report. And that looks at the overall risk of that material releasing fibre should it be disturbed. Now, the, the assessments that Ian explained, the priority risk assessments, again, they look at the overall risk of people or occupants being exposed to the materials within your property. So if you take them, them two assessments together, that then gives you the overall and the total risk. And as Ian explained, it, it helps you prioritise the order of what you need to do if you need to do something with your asbestos. So step four, you need to have an asbestos management plan. Now that needs to be in a written format. And this should outline basically how you're going to manage your asbestos on your property and how you're going to prevent people being exposed to asbestos. Now, it should have set procedures on how you're going to manage that, how you're going to communicate the whole plan. It's also going to look at various different ways that you're going to control contractors on site, staff, occupants, visitors, and how you keep them safe from being exposed to asbestos. So the management plan, like Neil said, it's the written plan. It, it just details how essentially you're going to be managing. So the day-to-day, how do you stop people being exposed? How do you stop contractors coming to site to work on products? It could be as simple as within the signing in log, the contractors that come to site also have to sign in to the asbestos register before they're allowed on site. And there might be another process in there where they have to produce and show you their asbestos awareness certificate before they come and start work. Those type of things, but it's the written detail of how you plan to achieve that, basically. Yeah, and it can be basically as simple and straightforward as you require it for your site, or it can be very complex where you've got multiple sites, multiple different teams and contractors all independently working on your site. That's when um, you you do have to have definitely set procedures and and protocols in place. Step five, so making (coughs) asbestos safe. So you've had the asbestos survey report done, you've got a procedure, you've done your risk assessments, you know what works need to be done. Essentially, making asbestos safe is a big step as well. It's all very well and good knowing where your asbestos is, but if you know it's on site, it's uh, in a bad condition and something needs doing about it, well, you need to do something about it. And there's a few options with asbestos. It doesn't always have to be removed. And there's kind of a myth around asbestos, I think, that once asbestos is found, it's got to be removed. It doesn't. Essentially, if asbestos is in a a good, safe, sealed condition, then it can remain in situ. So it all depends on, on what's needed. I mean, it might have to be removed as part of a project or something like that. But essentially, it is making sure that works are carried out that are needed. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah, I would just mirror that. So lots of our clients come to us saying, right, you've identified this asbestos. I need to get it removed, but I haven't got the budget for it. Um, But that's not what the regulations are talking about. You know, it's it's about managing that risk. And if you can prevent people coming into contact with it, then that's probably the best way forward. But essentially, sometimes it's, it's kind of impossible to manage asbestos if it's in a poor degraded friable condition so sometimes you know remediation works are required to sort of reduce that risk of people being exposed to the the asbestos step six communicating and sharing okay so under regulation four due to manage the duty holder has a responsibility to communicate asbestos information within their buildings so that should be definitely supplied to any contractor you've got coming to working on your site they need to have that um, asbestos information to make sure that their work's not going to disturb anything or any asbestos in, in your property. But to add to that, it's definitely, you know, to keep people safe within your building, you need to communicate that information to anyone that needs it, really. And um, that may be on-site staff. Um, you know, if you're in a school, it could be the teachers. Or if you're in offices, it's definitely the employees. And um, to make sure that they don't accidentally or intentionally damage the asbestos in there. And again, if you've got visitors as well, they may need to have that information. It's how you communicate that as well. Just something to think of. Yeah. Step seven. So reviews and updates. Basically, once you've got asbestos at your survey, you know where it is. It's now in a good condition. As a minimum, it needs to be reinspected every 12 months. 
You might want to re-inspect it more often, depending on what the priority risk assessment comes out as, but you definitively need to um, re-inspect the asbestos every 12 months as a minimum. And also along with that, it's a check of not just the asbestos. So, And when I say re-inspection, it's not a survey, it's a a re-inspection of it. So the previously identified asbestos is visually checked to make sure it hasn't degraded, there's no damage that's occurred since the last time it was inspected. This is just to make sure that, like I say, it's it's always in a good condition. And the other elements that need to be checked along with the re-inspection are your actual management plan, the register that you're holding, the plans that you're holding, all of the information that you've got about the asbestos. Is it up to date? Is it correct? Is the management plan working? You can have the best management plan in the world. However, if, I don't know, contractors are coming to site and not signing in and going and cracking on with their works, well, it's not working. So at that review, it needs to make sure that the document is basically working. Yeah, definitely working, up to date, relevant to the site. Um, If anything's changed, then you may need to change your procedures and stuff like that. So there are the seven steps. So just a quick summary. So step one, identify it. So we need to find out where the asbestos is. Step two, record the findings. So make sure you keep up to date the information about asbestos. Keep the register and the drawings up to date to make sure they're relevant. Step three, risk assessment. So you need to assess the likelihood of people being exposed to asbestos in your building. Four, put together an asbestos management plan. That needs to be in a written format, which details how you're going to manage all the risks within that property. Number five, make sure all your asbestos is safe unless you're preventing physically people being exposed to it. Step five, communicate and sharing. Make sure your asbestos information is communicating to all parties that need it. And then seven is reviewing, make sure it's up to date and it works. Okay, so there's seven steps. That's it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you need anything, you need any assistance, you know where we are. We can obviously help you out. Thanks for listening. If you want to get a copy of that... There'll be a link on the download on this video on the podcast information. Remember, asbestos first, not last. <laughs>